Hello and welcome to my channel, Jersey Shore Pondscapes Videos. My name is Chris and I've been professionally building koi ponds, waterfalls, water gardens, and water features for over 25 years. I've put together this channel along with my website, www.pondscapesandmore.com, to help you design, build, understand, maintain, and ultimately, hopefully, enjoy your koi pond or water feature. We're going to be doing about 30 videos, maybe more, <laughs> um, on just about every topic you can think of when it comes to ponds and waterfalls and, and all this stuff. And I really hope to share with you a lot of the knowledge and experience that I've learned over the years and um, give you lots of tips and tricks on, on how to take care and build and construct your own pond. Okay, so um, please check out my website. It works in conjunction with this channel. Um, basically what I planned on doing was to set up this website with a bunch of pictures and descriptions that you can look at and then come on to my channel and then watch different videos on, on different topics um, so you can understand what's going on in those pictures and vice versa, right? You can come on my channel, watch a video on a specific topic, and then go to the website and look at some pictures and see how it's actually used in action on my jobs. All right, so thank you very much for your time. Let's jump right in and get to the, today's video. Thank you. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Jersey Shore Pondscapes videos. Today we're gonna be talking about, guess what? Pumps. <laughs> okay, so we're going to look at the different types of pumps and what size pump you know we need for our pond. Um, hopefully, it help give you a little more insight. I know when you're choosing your pump as to you know which one you should have for your pond. So let's talk first about external pumps. All right, obviously this is an external pump. This is something that's gonna go outside your pond and it's gonna pull water from either a suction strainer um, pipe that goes down inside your pond or maybe from a skimmer or possibly even from a filter tank like an external gravity filter or something like that. Um, these pumps are available in a wide range of sizes and uh, water flow rates. Okay, maybe anywhere from 2,500 gallons an hour all the way up to 13, 14, 15,000 gallons per hour. Um, they basically, these are really nice because these have unions built right onto the pumps that unscrew, right? Come apart, there's little O-rings in the bottom, it's all seals really nice. And what this is, there's one on the outlet and one on the inlet. And what that allows you to do is if they're all, you know, uh, glued together with PVC pipes that you can just unscrew these and remove the pump right out. So it's a really nice feature. Um, this particular pump comes with what's called a pump trap already built into the whole housing of the pump. Okay, and a pump trap is basically a basket, a strainer basket that's inside um, this housing here that prevents debris, leaves, rocks, whatever, from being sucked up and pulled into the impeller of the pump where it could jam. Um, if the impellers jam, uh, then you know your pump's not going to be running and it can burn out. So, um, you know, and various other things, right? If your pump's not running, your waterfall's not working, your filter's not working, and you know, your UV lights aren't working, or you know, whatever you have connected to it. So we need to keep this pump free. So periodically we need to check this basket and make sure it's nice and clean, okay? So um, I'm just gonna talk briefly about um, these pumps um, as opposed to a pool pump, all right? So a pool pump is a pool pump. A pond pump is a pond pump. To me, very different very different things okay now a lot of times I go to people's houses and I look at their pond and I look at their filtration system and they have a pool pump hooked up to it and my first reaction is well one you know they don't know the difference but for me I'm like why is there a pool pump on a pond 
all right? Or even sometimes pool filters. Like, we're not setting up a pool, right? We're not building a pool. We're building a pond. So why do we have pool equipment on our pond, all right? Well, one thing um, that I find is that sometimes ponds are built by landscapers that don't really know all the time a lot about the filtration. They can build all the pond, the pond, the, all the rock work, the waterfalls, and it'll look beautiful. I, absolutely, no problem, right? But when it comes to filtration and water quality, they have no clue. All right, they just go to the local pond store and say, hey, I just built a pond that's this big by this big and I need to throw some kind of filter system in it. You know, what kind of pump do I need? Okay, good luck with that one. But the big difference also is, you know, it's easy for them to go to a pool supply and, and, and pick up a pump and, and they're done. Now, a pool pump is what's considered a high head pressure pump. It's made to pull water from 30, 40, 50, 60 feet away through two skimmers, two bottom drains, and, and pump it through high pressure, you know, filter tanks, and send it, you know, back all the way back 50, 60 feet to a pond with, you know, three returns, maybe a jacuzzi, God knows what, okay? It needs to be a high head pressure pump. It spins at 3,400 RPMs, okay? And it's got a lot of power to pull that water and push it all back. A pond pump is basically just recirculating the water in your pond. Um, we're, we're pulling water from maybe 10, 15, maybe 20 feet away, right? Typically the pumps and stuff are close to the pond, the filters. You know, maybe we're pulling out of, a, like for my ponds, I'm pulling out of gravity-fed filter systems. My pump is here. You know where my tank is? Right here. We're right here, <laughs> okay? I'm pulling from two feet away. Three feet, maybe. <laughs> All right, um, so we're not, putting such a demand on this pump like we do on a pool pump. Now this pump right here is a half horsepower and it pumps about 7,500 gallons an hour. Okay. A similar pool pump that'll move the same volume of water, all right, probably is going to be at least, at least one horsepower, if not maybe a horse and a half, one and a half horsepower. Okay. That pump spins at 3,400 RPMs because it's a high pressure pump. This is a low head pressure pump. This is going to spin at half that rate. This impeller spins at 70, um, 1,750 RPMs. Okay, so what's the big difference here? All right, that pump might be drawing 12, 13, 14 amps. This pump is pulling just over four. It's a big difference in energy consumption. Big difference. All right. Now, <clears throat> that pump probably cost half the price of this one. So people say, "Well, I'm going to spend, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars on on this pump when I can buy that one for four hundred twenty-nine dollars or whatever." All right. Okay. Energy. <laughs> this thing is going to save you so much money over that. All right, your electric bill there is probably going to be $100 plus a month. This one maybe, you know, $20, $25 a month, maybe. Okay. Um, those pumps make a lot of noise. They run loud, right? Because they're, they're pulling a lot of water, right? <laughs> this pump purrs like a kitten. You won't even hear this pump running. Especially if you hear have this thing, you know, near a waterfall or something like that. You're never going to hear this over the sound of the water. So, um, definitely uh, two very different products, right, for two very different usages, all right? So, keep that in mind. Yes, it's well worth spending the extra money for these pumps. Now, a pool pump, you're going to be running a short season, right, especially here in New Jersey. 
You know, we usually open our pools up by around Memorial Day, end of May, and we're usually shutting them down right after Labor Day, you know, early September. So basically we're running our pool for June, July, August, three months, right? And that pool pump isn't even running 24-7, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I, we used to have a pool in our old house and we'd, you know, run it for a few hours, you know, during the day and whatever, and that was it. Um, a pond pump, I'm trying to get ponds opened up and running in March, weather permitting, but hopefully by the end of March I'm turning on these pumps. And these pumps are going to run 24-7 constantly, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, well into November, sometimes even December. So these pumps are going to be running 9 to 10 months a year. 24 7 constant we can't shut these off if we shut these off we're we're not filtering our pond we're not our uv lights won't work our filters won't work our waterfalls won't work the fish won't have aeration if we're relying on this for a waterfall or something for aeration in our pond so these things uh, need to run a lot so energy efficiency on it is huge all right it makes a big difference so, um, yeah, keep that in mind, okay, when picking a pump. Now, submersible pumps, okay, obviously our pumps are going to go in the pond. Uh, they can be submerged underwater. Maybe we're using them in a skimmer, or maybe we're just putting them down the bottom of the pond with a, with a hose, a pipe coming on out, um, you know, feeding your a filter tank or something outside or a waterfall or whatever have you. Um, smaller pumps like this can be used on you know smaller ponds perhaps um, running a fountainhead or you know a statue that spits out water um, or you know just a small like canister filter like a small um, canister filter on, on, a, on a small little pond um, this one is 900 gallons an hour okay this one here is actually 3700 gallons an hour and again both of these pumps come in all different sizes, right? This is a, this pump is 3,700. You can get one of these that's over 6,000 gallons an hour. These little pumps come anywhere from maybe 100 gallons an hour all the way up to, you know, two, three, four thousand gallons an hour. Um, just depends on manufacturers and stuff. But the reason why I have these two is one, you know, just give you an idea for different usages. But also the difference between these two pumps is this pump has a suction strainer on the front, okay, um, to stop any kind of debris from getting in. This pump does not. This pump is wide open on the bottom, has a big hole here directly to the impeller. Um, this pump is what they say is able to pass solids, okay. So if a leaf or something like that comes up to this pump, and the pump whoo, sucks it in, this pump can just grind it up and spit it out. All right. This pump is not. That leave is going to come and it's going to sit and hit that suction strainer and stop. If too many leaves or debris collect around this thing, all right, it's going to stop the water flow. So we need to be able to clean these strainers off. So make sure if you're using these pumps in, in your pond application that they're in an accessible area where you can reach down and, or pull it out or clean it off um, regularly because they, they will get clogged. You're pulling debris directly into it, right? So um, just be aware of that. These pumps, however, will not clog as much. Absolutely not. These will run and run and run. The problem is with these, since there's no strainer or cover over the bottom here, you can also suck up frogs fish <laughs> okay so you got to be careful as to where you're using these so a lot of times these are great in skimmers right because we don't have our fish swimming into the skimmer we don't have to worry about them getting sucked up but if this is just sitting on the bottom of a pond we don't want little fish and stuff um, to get sucked up i have um, had people call me and say oh you know my my pond my pump is not running and can you come over and take a look okay <laughs> 
So I go over there and they have one of these pumps, you know, down in the bottom of the pond. And, you know, I'll reach down and I'll feel the, the pump or the hose above it. And if I feel it vibrating, I know the pump is running. I know it has power and it's running. But if there's no water coming out of it, then we know that there's something clogged inside the impeller. So we'll, you know, pull this pump up out of the water and uh, <laughs> a couple times I, I've, I've taken these pumps and pulled them up and looked at the bottom and there's like, you know, frog's legs sticking out of it and the frog is all ground up inside the impeller. Oh, sorry, <laughs> a little graphic, but it happens, okay? So um, just keep that in mind, all right? You know, with these pumps, if they don't have a strainer on the bottom, they are capable of, you know, sucking up things you don't want to get sucked up. Um, yeah, so keep in mind also, so, you know, what size pump do you need for your pond? So when you're buying your pump, make sure you look at the box that it comes in or the instruction manuals that come with it. You can always go online and see what their flow rates are and see what their um, pressure, flow rate pressure um, is according to the height and distance that you're pumping your water. They will have charts, um, flow rate charts on, on the boxes of these pumps. So if this pump, just for an example, is 3,700 gallons per hour, that's right here, okay? They should have a chart on that box that will tell you at 10 feet away and eight feet high, the flow rate is, you know, maybe instead of, maybe it's 2,900, okay? Instead of 3,700 and so on and so on. It'll tell you what the pressures are as you get further away. A pump um, like this is pretty strong. This will keep a lot of head pressure. A pump like this, or what's called a mag drive pump, is basically a pump that's driven um, with magnets and electric current around the magnets, um, are very energy efficient but they don't have a lot of head pressure. They'll lose pressure pretty quick. So again, you know, just really be sure to check your flow rates because you don't want to put this little pump in the pond and hook it up to a filter that's supposed to have, you know, this is 900 gallons an hour. Let's say your filter is 900 gallons an hour and that's what you want to have connected to it. So you think, perfect. But what you're not thinking of is that your filter is not right here. Your filter might be 10 feet away. And, and three feet higher than this, right? Because this is gonna go maybe down in a pond and by the time you bring the hose up and you come around. So instead of having 900 gallons of that filter, maybe now you only have 500. All right, just an example. So just keep that in mind, okay? Your head loss, your head pressure loss. Um, also, if you're using PVC pipes, which I definitely recommend, hoses and tubing can be a real nightmare. Um, make sure you don't have a lot of sharp 90 degree elbows, okay? Because every time you come up and you go that way and you go that way and you go that way and you go that way, that way that, you're losing head pressure as opposed to just going like this with maybe flex PVC or just using 45s, okay? 90 degree elbows can really kill head pressure, all right? So keep that in mind. Um, if you're sucking water from the pond with an external pump, you're going to want a suction strainer like this, and we're going to want a check valve like this. All right? So the suction strainer is pretty obvious. It goes on the end of the pipe, and it's meant to keep debris and fish and frogs and everything out from getting sucked directly up into the pipe and sucked up into the pump. Check valve is a special unit that only allows water to flow in one direction. There's a little flap inside this thing that when the water is flowing this way, that flap will open and the water can flow through freely. When the pump stops, the water in a pipe starts coming back and it closes that valve, that little flap, and it keeps all that water in the pipe. So it keeps your pump primed. These pumps have to be full of water to be started and to run, all right? So we need to have this pump trap. We open this lid. 
We fill this trap up with water. It fills down our pipe all the way down to our check valve at the bottom of the pond or the bottom of the filter or wherever we're going. Once this is all full of water, close the lid, plug it in, and away it goes. All right. If we don't have that check valve, when we shut this pump off, or if we need to open this to clean this basket, sometimes the water level will drop. Okay, And if there's no water left in this pipe, because it all just flowed right back out to the pond, we can't prime our pump again, because we can't fill this back up with water. All the water is just going to go right back down the pipe to the pond, and it's not going to fill up and hold. Okay, So check valve is really important. Um, check valves are used in pumps like this a lot if they're in skimmers. And they're actually pretty important in skimmers because a lot of common installations is to have this pump running inside a skimmer and a pipe going up to a filter box on top of a waterfall that has like a spillway so the, the water fills up through the filter media in the box and then overflows down a spillway right down your waterfall. So these come in handy to keep right here on top of the pump. Because what's going to happen is we're going to only allow water to go out and not come back. Um, when this pump is, is running, we have no problem. When this pump shuts off and all that water from that filter tank, all that dirty muck, sludge, dirt, mud, everything in that filter tank is going to want to flow back down the pipes. Okay. This will prevent that from happening. This will hold all that water in the pipe and the filter so that all that crap doesn't come back down and back into the pond. Okay, so that's um, really important. Those check valves are great. They're, you know, a two inch check valve might be somewhere between $30, $40, but it's well, well worth that price because it's gonna save you a lot of headaches and keep your pumps primed and keep all the garbage in your filters and not coming back into your pond. Okay, um, so as far as size of the pump, you know, what size pumps do we need? Um, if you're hooking it up uh, to a filter, you need to feed a filter tank. Um, you should be able to, whatever filter you're purchasing from the store, should have, again, um, flow rates on the box, just as the pumps do. The filters should. And it should tell you, you know, a, a minimum and a maximum flow rate for, for whatever filter. So, you know, we want to size our pumps accordingly for that. If we are running um, a pump for a waterfall, okay, how much water do we need to come down the waterfall? Well, a general rule of thumb, just a guideline, is to have 100 gallons of water flow per one inch of width of that waterfall. Okay, so if you're 12 inches wide, we need about 1,200 gallons, all right? Um, so just, it's a rough idea, right? If you want Niagara Falls, well then you probably can double that, right? If you just want a slow little trickle, well maybe you can go half that. But it's just a guide, okay? If your water falls three feet wide, you want 3,600 gallons to make a nice, you know, decent waterfall, okay? So that'll give you an idea with that. Um, we talked about the strainers on, on these pumps or, or um, a direct um, draw inside. Be aware of that. Be aware of the length of cord on these pumps, okay? This little pump, and this has got like a 30 foot cord on it. This, this cord here may be, you know, 15 feet or so. Um, if you're putting these into a skimmer, Make sure you have electric near that skimmer and make sure that you know your your pumps um, cord can reach your outlet. Okay. Um, these pumps too. I don't like running extension cords to these things. If you need to run an extension cord to power a pump, make sure it is a heavy duty cord. Okay, maybe a 10 gauge or 12 gauge. We don't want to put a cheap little extension cord on. Now, the longer the distance of an extension cord, we're going to lose amperage 
the longer the distance, okay? So make sure it's a nice heavy duty cord if you're gonna plug it in like this. But ultimately, if you're putting in a pond and you're hooking up a nice pump and a filter system, pond system like this, you're gonna have to call an electrician and get a, a direct, you know, line run out there maybe at least a 15 amp uh, breaker i usually tell people you know run a 20 amp circuit with like a four gang you know four outlets in the box and a 20 amp circuit um, 15 amp would be fine because like a pump like this is only drawn you know four four and a half amps some of them only draw like three amps some of them might draw four or five amps but put in the 20 watt um, circuit you're going to be running a pump a UV light, maybe you're putting, want to do some landscape, low voltage landscape lighting outside, uh, maybe an air pump, you know, whatever. Just make sure, you, you know, you have the power out there. You might as well do it. All right. So I think that pretty much um, basically sums things up. Um, also, external pumps like this, okay, sometimes they do not come with this trap built into the pump housing. Okay, sometimes you're just buying the motor with the pump on the front and not the trap. And the trap would be a totally separate unit like this that you purchase separately. Okay, if that's the case, purchase this. Okay, you need this in front of your pump. I really recommend you get this. I don't care if you have this little strainer on in a pond and you're going to say, well, I don't need a trap here. I got a strainer in a pond that's going to stop debris. No, I guarantee it. Believe me, you're going to need, want that trap in front of your pump, right? Um, you know, what is this? Maybe a hundred bucks, okay? The pump is eight, nine hundred dollars to replace. I think that's a pretty good insurance policy, right? A hundred bucks to protect nine hundred dollars. So, keep that in mind too, okay? And uh, I think that really does it. You know, when it comes to flow rates in your pond and filtration systems, um, don't underestimate your filters. It, there's no such thing as over filtering your pond, okay? So I would much rather see you have a thousand gallon pond and put a, a, a 2,500 gallon filter on it, okay? Um, an idea for how many how much water should we be filtering in our pond you know the old rule of thumb that I, I used to read about and learn was you want to turn half of the ponds volume over an hour so if you have a 2,000 gallon power pond you want at least a thousand gallons an hour going through your filters um, I don't go by that at all anymore okay I may be building a, a you know a thousand gallon pond and I'm gonna put a one-eighth horsepower pump on that thing that's gonna draw you know at least three thousand gallons an hour the more I can turn that water over in that pond the cleaner it's gonna be what's the real important factor is you know what size is your filter your filter needs to handle that water volume okay um, so make sure you put a nice size filter on there. We're going to be doing a whole nother video on pond filtration and you know all that stuff. It's going to get pretty intense um, but uh, definitely check that out because your, your filter system and your pump are the heart of your system and if this stuff isn't working properly, if it's not set up right, you know you're going to have a lot of problems in the pond. So definitely pay a lot of attention. Um, when I'm setting up a pond, the, the main majority of, of the cost is in the equipment for the filtration, right? The pumps, the filters, the bottom drains, the UV lights, all right? Maybe a bead filter, all right? We'll get into all that, but make sure you have a nice flow rate through your pond. Your pumps are pumping more than enough water, and your filter systems can handle you know the amount of water you're flowing and you have adequate aeration coming down your waterfalls and you know I think that's it okay um, yeah I mean the smaller you go know, from small pumps up to large pumps um, 
They're available in all different sizes and styles. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Mama Feed uh, Water World in Farmingdale, New Jersey for supplying me with this equipment uh, for this video. Um, those guys are great over there and I buy a lot of um, pond supplies from them and I would definitely recommend them here in our area. And so check them out. And if you have any questions or suggestions or thoughts, you know, please uh, contact me. You can leave a, a you know, a, a note below here and uh, I'll be glad to get back to you. But uh, other than that, I think we're about set. So, um, you know, if you learned something today, you know, please hit that like button. If you're interested in more um, videos and more information about ponds, please um, hit the subscribe button. I'm going to be doing at least at least 30 videos on this channel, uh, covering just about every topic you can think of. So, um, hopefully, you know, if you hit subscribe, you'll get uh, notifications on when the next videos are out. I'm going to try to keep them pumping out here, and um, I'd really appreciate it to hit the subscribe button. It really helps to support my channel. And uh, check out my website. It's pondscapesandmore.com. And you can see a lot of pictures and descriptions of ponds and work I've done in the past. And uh, hopefully it'll inspire you a little bit as well. All right. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.